that's almost ready. Hey Prop Mob, I'm Eduardo Talbert. This is Muscle Tutorials. In today's video, we are making delicious human face pads. I wanted to have a quick time out to let you know that this uh, people pot pies are not my idea. I did not come up with these. Actually, I was inspired by the creations from Ashley at It Came From Under My Bed. So I'm going to put the link below. Make sure you visit her, uh, her link, her Instagram, and see all the cool things. And that's how I was inspired to make these face, human face pies, people pot pies, or whatever you want to call it. All right, let's get on with the show. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the clay. Okay, we're going to sculpt the face out of clay. I've also bought these uh, pie tins at the, at the dollar store. Uh, these are the nice ones, right? You can get the disposable uh, the ones, you know, the ones that look like foil. But uh, these at the dollar store are pretty cool for a dollar each. I'm going to use this to know the size of the face that I'm going to sculpt. So let's get the clay out. This regular moist pottery clay. And they have this at all the craft stores and everything. And I'm going to use this thing to cut some slabs of clay out. This little tool comes in the like little sculpting kit that comes with all the sculpting tools that I've linked below. Just like that, we're going to slice some clay. This lab. I think we'll probably need just two. There you go. All right, Let's see if that's big enough. Yeah. I think so. All right, I'm gonna push these guys together. needs to be a little bit wider. All right, that should fit. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna smooth this out all the way. And I'm just using my hands. And after I have it all smoothed out, I'll take this tool and just start getting it all nice and even, all across. That's nice and flat. So, we're taking one of the pipe tins, and we're going to cut the excess off, and that gives us the exact size that we have to sculpt inside of. There you go, there's our pie surface. So now I'm going to start drawing the face. I'm looking on the internet to see the proportions of eyes, nose, whatever. It's going to be about a full size face. I'm just looking online to pick up the proportions of the face. And I'm applying them to this. So there's the forehead and that is the chin. So we build everything right here. That's time to look like a face. So next step, I'm going to start building up the nose, the lips, carving out the eyes because there's no eyes, right? So uh, just sculpting, I guess, like you would sculpt the face. All right, let's get started with that.
you can have this nose complete. I even put some uh, nostrils in here and they go pretty deep, right? Because it's supposed to be like the face peeled off. For the eyes, I'm going to just cut them out and leave a hole there uh, because it's supposed to be just the face, as I mentioned. But I'm going to leave some texture here so that we can choose to either leave it with lids, with eyelids on, or with eyelids off, depending on what kind of pie you want to make. And for the eyelids, just roll a little piece of clay like that and then just uh, blend it right in. That's looking good. Now I'm going to do the bottom lid and do the same to this eye. See, it looks like an eye that has been gouged out. All I have to do is blend in the insides. Those eyes are looking great. So now I'm going to start with the mouth. For that, I'm just going to make two lips and then flatten them and then dig the mouth out like we did with the eyes. For the lips, I'm just rolling a piece of clay like this and putting it right where I think they would go. That looks like a cartoon right now. That is looking great. So now I'm going to start texturizing the skin. But first, I'm going to take most of the areas and just smooth them out with this sponge. The idea here is to get rid of the big chunky scratches and tool marks. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm taking a piece of burlap, just very gently pushing it in. And that gives some pores that then you smooth out gently with this, right? And it gives you a little bit of a texture. So I'm going to do this sporadically on different areas of the face. I think we are done here. The only thing that is missing that makes this look like a pie is the crimping of the edges with the fork. So just like Martha Stewart would, let's crimp these guys. That looks awesome. Let's make the mold. For the molding process, we are going to make a mold out of this cheap all-purpose plaster. There are links below to all the materials I'm using here today. I'm going to start putting plaster into the water until the plaster is saturated with water and it will look like a dry riverbed. We're just going to sprinkle it in until we get to that point. That's starting to get saturated. That looks like a dry lake bed. That is perfect. So I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. Give or take 10 minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to release the area around this so that the plaster doesn't stick to this wood. For that, I'm using just regular petroleum jelly and a brush. I'm going to paint all around this mold. That looks great. I'm going to make two wedges out of clay here on the side. Just in case it sticks, we can slide a screwdriver and lift the mold. Put that there. All right, next step, let's mix this really, really well. I'm going to use my hands, but you can use gloves, because if you use this too long, it will start drying up your hands. And just make sure you get all the lumps out. You'll see the lumps and just squeeze through them. All right, next step, I'm going to take a chip brush 
a new one, not the one with the Vaseline. And I'm going to take some of this plaster right here that is really liquid right now, and we're going to cover all the details really carefully. This is where you capture the detail. So this is where we avoid all the air bubbles and everything. Especially in the eyes, nostrils, mouth, everywhere. And just be gentle with it because you will erase all these pores if you just rub it across. And here's where you capture the detail on these little fork marks. Right, I got all the detail of the face. Now let's get these edges right here. All around. We are basically making a flat latex mask here. Now let's start just piling up another layer of plaster. Without disturbing that first layer. So very gently just dripping it all over. Get the eyes covered, the nose, the mouth, eyebrows, everything. That's looking great. Now I'm going to use my hands to scoop some plaster onto the whole pie. As you can see it's thickening up and it's starting to give us a little dome shape. I'm going to let this thicken for about five minutes and then I'll go with another layer. For this next step, I am taking some of these burlap strips and dipping them in the plaster, then wringing them up real good. You don't want to push them in, but just lay them just nice and flat on your work. This will strengthen the mold in case you want to use the mold to make more than one pie. I plan to make maybe a few, so I want the mold to be nice and strong. I'm going to put a couple vertically as well. That will make it even stronger. That's perfect. Now let's keep layering the plaster on top of this. That's looking good. So it's starting to build up as you can see and the plaster is starting to thicken. So I'll keep doing that until we use up all the plaster. I want to get about at least three quarters of an inch thickness all around. All right, I used up all the plaster and it's starting to gel up. See, so I'm pushing it just a little bit up to give it a dome shape to the whole mold. I'm not disturbing the top, I'm just moving the plaster up a bit. All right, this is looking great. So all I'm doing is just smoothing it out. That's looking great, so I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to probably let it sit for a few hours. I'm just going to go have dinner and then come back and check to see. This will go through an exothermic reaction where this will warm up and then cool down and then it will harden all the way. All right, we'll see you in a minute. I let this set overnight. It's nice and solid, still a little, you can feel a little moisture on it. I use this blade to kind of clean the edges real well, right? Now I am taking a screwdriver because this is a really flat mold. It has a bigger risk of breaking, right? When you have a round one like that, you just lift it and you're good, but this is pretty flat. So I'm going around with this screwdriver and just tapping the edges every two or three inches just to lift the whole mold uh, gradually. All right, this thing is done. Very gently flip it over, and we're going to take this clay out of here. It should peel off for the most part. Oh, look at that, one piece. 
Now very gently, I'm going to go around the whole mold and clean up any loose pieces of clay, like this. They should come out that easily. Make sure you don't scratch the mold. I'm going to take a soft toothbrush and gently with water kind of clean up the mold. That way it gets rid of any Vaseline or any residue of clay that is left over. And we have a clean plaster mold. I'll be right back. This is squeaky clean. Right, so now the trick to getting a good skin uh, of latex is for this to be like dry, like bone dry. So I'm going to set this up on top of a fan and leave it there, go get some lunch, come back. And when this is totally dry, we'll pour the latex in. This is dry. So we're getting ready to pour the latex in. For this, you're gonna need just a little bit of latex, okay? You're gonna need a ton. Uh, we're going to fill it up, maybe, until it covers the details, the eyes and the mouth, just barely, because that's going to be cut out anyway. Uh, and we're gonna let it sit there for about, I'm guessing, about half hour. Okay, so for that I'm using this uh, new uh, mask making latex from Black Lagoon. This video is not sponsored by them, but they did send me this little sample for free. Okay, so I'm going to try it out to see how it works. This is mask making latex, which is different than the liquid latex you get at Walmart. This is thicker, okay. Smells like latex. I'm going to take this chip brush, it's disposable, and I'm going to brush the latex all around the mold to make sure we capture all the detail. Okay, once we've captured the detail with a thin layer of latex, we'll pour the rest in and let it dwell. And remember, since this mold is totally dry, it'll start absorbing the moisture out of the latex almost immediately and forming that skin. Right after this, just pour the latex in. Make sure it gets into every little crack. All right, that's looking good. A little bit more. That is perfect right there. Let it sit for half an hour. This is ready. The next step is to pour the excess back into the tub. I've poured this out. Now I'm going to flip it upside down and let it drain all the way and we'll let that skin cure all the way. It'll turn slightly yellow. This latex appears to be a little whiter than the one I'm used to, so it'll be like this color, right? So. Flip it over, let it drain. This is cured. I let it cure overnight because this latex is a little bit thicker than your regular liquid latex. But it's now nice and solid, so let's peel this out and see what it looks like. Now this is ready to peel off, but let's put some baby powder so that it doesn't stick to each other, even though this cured really well. I don't want to run that risk. Right, that's not tacky at all. All right, the mold looks good. Pull it gently so that you don't mess up the mold and there is the raw pull all right that looks great so now i'm going to take some scissors and trim this whole edge if you want to leave the eyes you can leave them i'm going to trim them out for this one i'm going to make out several more pulls out of this mold uh, but for this one i'm going to cut the mouth out the eyes out trim all this uh, so let's get started with that That looks good. Now the mouth and the eyes. That's cleaned up. I cut the eyes and the mouth out, right? 
This one, I poured it into the mold and let it sit there. And this latex is pretty thick. So when I poured it out, it still made like a really thick, like almost an eighth of an inch thick pie crust. Okay, that's pretty cool, pretty sturdy. If you want this for a serious prop, this is it. For this one, it's much thinner. I just took a brush and dipped it in there. Nice. <laughs> So I took a brush and I just brushed into the mold. Very thin, you can see the brush strokes, can you see that? Right? Uh, so I just brushed it in, let it sit, and got this pie crust that is super thin. Once we cover it, you won't see the brush strokes. So next step, I'm gonna set that aside. Got my pie tin and my exploding expanding foam. And uh, I'm just going to put a couple layers here let it expand and then we'll trim it when it's cured and this will be our pie filling now while these cure i'm setting them aside i'm working on these so if you want a raw pie the color that this latex cures looks exactly like raw pie dough right so if you want to have one in a fridge that hasn't been baked yet just leave it it looks great but that's not what we're doing here we need to paint these so there are many ways you can paint these you can use an airbrush which I will use on one of these it's a little bit fancier and you can also quite simply use paint and brush it on top so if we start thinking about this uh, as a baked piece of skin so the high areas will be burnt more so it'll be like a tanner browner color some parts might be uh, burnt like the edges uh, also the edges around the eyes, nose, whatever. And you also have some flesh, because they're supposed to be like a skin. So the insides will be a little bit redder, a little bit more, uh, I don't know, rare, I suppose. I mean, how do you put this, right? So let's start just painting this, brushing, see what it looks like. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, just give it a glaze of a more baked color, something a little more orangish, brownish color. For this paint job, I have some paints right here, right? in colors that I think is what a baked pie would look like. And we're going to start just painting the whole mask with that color. Now for the more burnt areas, I'm adding a little bit of brown, less yellow, and just hitting those high areas like that so it looks like it's more burnt. This brown and white, I'm doing this dark spots that are more burnt, right? And it starts jumping out. See that looks like a baked good right now. Now the edges are also nice and crispy, so I'm gonna do those brown as well. And just vary how dark or light you do it, different parts of the edges. You want a crunchy crust. All right, for the really burnt spots, use black, but be very careful because you can ruin the whole thing with black. You just need a few little touches on a few edges. So instead of adding the black directly, I'm going to add it to the brown and mix brown with a little bit of the black to make a darker burnt color. And still adding a little bit of white to carry it. And very, very gently, like I said, the very highest spots. This is the part where you left the pie just a little too long in the oven. Get a little charred eye maybe right there. Yeah, that looks good. Don't forget this edges too, so we're gonna have to come around and burn them as well, just like that. That is looking good. So it's gonna go on the pie like that, and we'll have pies, but we still have some touch up to do. We also have to trim this. I'm going to take the pie, which looked like this, and start shaving it down with this bread knife. And all I want to do is to be flush with this edge, but going up a little like a normal pie and back down to the other edge. Uh. 
that looks great. So I'm going to keep test fitting. That looks pretty good. So let's start painting the inside of the mouth, nostrils and eyes, right? Now that we have shaped this to the right color, right? And we've test fitted the mask. I'm going to paint this. And for that, I'm using some of the latex and some food coloring to give it like a brown fleshy base. Here's some regular cheap food coloring. You can find this at your grocery store or at the dollar store they have them too. It's going to be mostly red with a few drops of green to make it brown. Need a little bit of green. Right, that looks nice and brown. I'm going to take just a chip brush and just paint the whole thing. So this white creamy color will disappear when the when the latex cures and it will look more brown. That looks good. Let that dry all the way. While the pie tin with the foam sets and the latex, uh, let's get to the detailing here. And what I'm going to do is using a range of like reds, purples, uh, browns, going to make like fleshy tones where the face would have been cut off and where the, where the pie is not done all the way crispy. So it'll be all red and yucky. All I'm doing is rubbing the color in so it looks nice and bruised. Nice. Now let's do the eyelids. That looks painful. I'm just taking a little bit of water and some diluted paint and just getting a little bit of color in different areas as if there were some like blood spills or smears. That is looking fantastic. I'm going to touch up the last white spots like these guys and we should be done with this piece. And don't forget the edges. This is nice and nasty. That is the latex that has cured. It cured darker as I mentioned. So now we can take our finished pie face and just lay it on top and we can tack it down with some liquid latex. I'm going to use this that I spilled right there. Now if you want you have some of these holes and you want to line up with what your mouth is like that, you can do that too to make it look nasty. Alright, so let's line this up and get some liquid latex going. As you press it, that liquid latex will be super tacky and will grab that this latex and get it nice and stuck on there. Kind of like that. So there is most of the pie. I can decorate this many ways. You know, we did uh, on this channel we did some shrunken heads and they had hair that was punched in. We can punch in some hairs for the eyebrows if you wanted. Put some hairs in the nostrils. You can put a mustache if you want. Right? But if you do put a mustache or eyelashes or whatever, then take a lighter and singe them off a little bit so it looks like it was baked, obviously. Let's, let's get even more macabre here. Okay, so I'm going to decorate this. You can add teeth. You can do all kinds of things. How to decorate it, uh, I bought this. There's a link below if you're interested in using these. Although you can make your own because I have also a tutorial for making teeth out of hot glue. But I bought this set of teeth from... Uh, Amazon and the link is below and these are used to make temporary crowns and uh, all kinds of bridges so they are very realistic right and we can take a couple of these put them in here top and bottom uh, it's up to you and uh, let's see what they look like okay here's a incisor 
top left. We can just uh, glue it with a uh, liquid latex. I'll hold real good in there. Right, and maybe we can put a couple bottom teeth as well. There are some teeth right there, and uh, you can add bits and pieces of uh, crumpled up red liquid latex to make it look like flesh as well. I took the liquid latex and just painted it right here on my table. Now we can just peel these pieces off. To make those fleshy bits that you can fit everywhere, like in the eyes, like that. So here in the mouth. All right, that's looking pretty nasty there. One of the last details: a little bit of fake blood. That always goes a long way. And for that, I'm just grabbing a cotton swab and let's get all this stuff nice and wet with blood that is so creepy but that is how you make human face pies. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it if you think somebody else should learn how to make these guys, and uh, subscribe if you haven't, because this is what we do in this channel. All right, I'm Eduardo. This is Mozart Tutorials. You, me, all of us, we're the prop mob. I'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna go eat my pie.